Welcome to the Hillside Revolutionary News Station. Today we will be reporting on the major events that occurred during the Revolutionary War. We have reporters stationed in many of the 13 colonies ready to give you the details about wars, battles, and important people who contributed to the war. The Revolutionary War started in 1775 and lasted until 1783. The colonists wanted to be an independent country and not have the British government rule over them. Great Britain was making new laws and taxing the colonists and they thought this was unfair because they had no say in these laws. The war didn't happen right away. First, there were protests and arguments that led up to the war. Let's go to our reporters in Boston that will identify two of these events for us. Tate, what happened at the Boston Massacre? Hi, this is Tate from Boston. The Boston Massacre occurred on the night of March 5th, 1770. It started as a small argument between the British and the colonists, and it heated up fast. The colonists threw rocks, sticks, and snowballs at the British. The British captain sent soldiers to tell the people to calm down. An object hit the British soldiers which made him fire into the crowd and five of the other col soldiers started firing too. Five colonists died and 13 people were arrested. Private White, the British captain, was getting mad now. This event made the colonists look at the British in a different way. This event certainly contributed to more people supporting the war effort. The Boston Tea Party is another event that happened soon after the Boston Massacre. Julian is reporting from Boston. What can you tell us about this tea party, Julian? Hi, my name's Julian, reporting from Boston, Massachusetts. The Boston Tea Party occurred on the night of December 16, 1773, in Boston, Massachusetts. The Sons of Liberty were protesting against the British Empire's taxes. They wanted a say in the taxes. They dumped 342 crates of tea in the ocean, which is equal to about $1 million today, to protest against the British Empire. They could only buy tea from the British. Some of the people dressed up as Mohawk Indians as a disguise, but the British knew who did it. This event was shown to the British as how upset they were about the Tea Act. Thanks, Tate and Julian. Next, we go to Jacqueline, who joins us right outside of Boston. Jack Jacqueline, what can you tell us about what is happening in Lexington? Hi, my name is Jacqueline, and I'm reporting on the Battle of Lexington and Concord. The Battle of Concord and Lexington started the American Revolutionary War. It was a small fight. This is often called the shot heard around the world. No one is sure who shot the first shot. The British fight was led by Major Pickin. Some of the colonists got killed, but everyone else fled. After the Americans fled, the British started to march to the city of Concord. John Parker, the American leader, led the march. The American Revolution had officially begun. Thousands of militiamen surrounded Boston and shots were fired. The British decided to retreat and by the time they reached Boston, 174 men were wounded and 73 men had gotten lost. The Americans lost 49 men and 41 were wounded. These battles were the start of the American Revolution. Yes, Jacqueline, the shot heard round the world, the official start of the American Revolutionary War. But now we go to Bunker Hill, where Miranda will give us an update of another battle. Hi, I'm Miranda and I'm reporting from Boston. The Battle of Bunker Hill took place in Boston on June 17, 1775. A few months into the start of American Revolutionary War, General William Howe and Major John Pitcairn led the British. Colonial William Prescott led the American Army. Boston was being surrounded by the American troops. 
The British wanted to keep control of Boston, so the British took over two hills called Bunker Hill and Breed's Hill. The Americans found out about this and went to defend the hills. The American army secretly worked at night and were prepared when the British attacked the next day. The, Brit the British came to the hill a total of three times. The Americans fought them off the first two times but and had to leave since they were running out of ammunition. The Americans said, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. The British lost many soldiers and now they are vulnerable. More British soldiers died than American soldiers did. Although they lost the battle, it gave them a lot of courage, strength, and confidence to go on. Thanks, Miranda. The 13 colonies had been at war for about a year. When they decided that it was time to officially declare independence from British rule, now we'll join Tyler in Philadelphia, who will report about the most important document in U.S. history. Hi, I am Tyler, and I'm reporting from Philadelphia. In May of 1776, most colonists were ready to announce their independence from Great Britain. They wanted to write a letter to declare their independence. A community of five was formed. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Roger Sherman, Robert Livingston and Benjamin Franklin got together to write the letter. They put Thomas Jefferson in charge of writing it. After some changes, Congress voted on and announced independence on July 4th, 1776. The document has three parts. The first part is called the preamble. The second part is about how the king denied the rights of the colonists. And the third part said that the colonists were now independent. 56 people signed the Declaration of Independence. We celebrate the 4th of July today be because of the Declaration of Independence. We set up fireworks and celebrate because of our peace and freedom. Tyler, thanks for that report telling us about the document that contains some of the most important statements in American history. Here is one. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The realization of these words wouldn't come without a fight, and Reagan is reporting from Trenton, New Jersey, where George Washington has just delivered an unexpected surprise. Hi, my name is Reagan. I'm reporting from Trenton, New Jersey. This is about George Washington crossing the Delaware River. The year is 1776 and the date is December 25th. George Washington crossed the river to get to the Hessian soldiers that are also called German soldiers. George Washington surprised them on Christmas morning. It was icy and cold. The Hessians were not prepared. The Hessians had no idea that George Washington and his troops would attack them on Christmas morning. George Washington's army won. Also, George Washington captured 1,000 Hessians. 22 Hessians died, 83 were injured, but only two Patriots died and five were injured. The American soldiers were discouraged because they thought they were going to lose the war, but in the end, George Washington won. So it was done. And now George Washington thinks they can defeat Brit British soldiers. Thanks, Reagan. And now to Olivia with some breaking news from the latest Second Continental Congress. Olivia? Hi, this is Olivia reporting from Philadelphia. 
The Second Continental Congress was made up of members from all 13 colonies. They first met on May 10, 1775 in Philadelphia. The Second Continental Congress was led by John Hancock. Other members include Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin. One of the first things they had to do was form an army to fight against the British since a ver revolutionary war had started. On June 14, 1775, they formed the Continental Army and made George Washington the general of the army. army. Some other things they did were issue the Declaration of Independence, passed a flag resolution for the official United States flag, and signed the Articles of Confederation. The Second Continental Congress was important because they made a lot of decisions for the colonies. Thanks, Olivia, for bringing us up to date on those important developments. Next, we go to New York. Tess, we hear there's a heated battle taking place there. Battle of Saratoga. I am Tess reporting from New York. The battles of Saratoga were a couple of battles that ended in a victory for the Americans. The battle started in September 1777 and lasted until the British surrendered in October 1777. General Horatio was the American leader and General John Burgoyne was the British leader. The first battle was called the Battle of Freeman's Farm. At the end of the battle, the British took the field, but had twice as many deaths as the Americans. The next battle was the Battle of Beams Heights. More American soldiers came, and they were able to defeat the British. From the first battle until the British surrendered, the American soldiers increased from 9,000 to 15,000 soldiers. The British Army lost many soldiers in these battles. These battles were a turning point in the war because the Americans now felt they could win the war. Thanks for that report, Tess. Yes, that was a critical turning point in the war. The final battle of the Revolutionary War took place at Yorktown, where the British were decisively defeated. And then they began to officially consider a peace treaty. Then in 1783, the Paris Peace Treaty officially ended the Revolutionary War. But finally, we go to Cece with today's human interest story. This is Cece reporting from the Hillside School. Today I'm reporting on three important women who played a part in the Revo Revolutionary War. The first one is Betsy Ross. She sewed the first American flag for George Washington. The first flag was a symbol of freedom and it had 13 stars that represent the 13 colonies. Red stood for innocent, white stood for brave, blue stood for justice. The next woman, woman is Molly Pitcher. She loaded cannons for the Battle of Monmouth and also carried water to the soldiers. The last woman is Deborah Sanderson. She disguised herself as a man and enlisted in the Continental Army. She served 17 months in the Army under the name Robert Sherworth. Here are some additional facts about women in the war. Early on in the war, women nurses made $2 per month. Their salaries were raised to $8 per month by the end of the war. A lot of women became camp followers because they were poor and wanted to work for food. The wives of soldiers were sometimes allowed to work as camp followers in order to keep hus the husbands from quitting the army. As we can see, women played a big role in the war. Thanks, Cece, for reporting on those amazing heroic women. I would personally like to thank all our fearless news reporters for a job well done. And special thanks to Mrs. Kunzman and Mrs. Cohen for all their contributions to this news program. And that's today's Revolutionary War news. Thank you and goodbye.